Welcome to Take It From The Iron Woman. My name is Susanne Müller, your host and the Iron Woman. This podcast is about empowering yourself and others to make real changes in the world. You will hear from everyday, smart, sophisticated, hip people like you and me. Not everybody has to be an Iron Woman to impress the world. Together, we will learn from the sports and business leaders how you can become a more successful person as an entrepreneur or a leader. It's one step at a time, one day at a time. Take your steps now. Take your big steps now. Join me on this journey to success. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have only special guests and today we go to Switzerland. We talk in English with Ruedi Rohner. He's my cousin's partner. In Europe, we say partner, Hi. boyfriend. <laughs> so welcome, Ruedi. Maybe introduce yourself Hi, a little you. bit. Who are you? What do you do? And what do you do when you don't work? I'm not working anymore since one year I'm retired. I call myself being a professional sportsman now. Well, I'm not paid for, but it's it's basically <laughs> what I do more or less the whole day. Before, I worked for, well, many years for Nestle Logistics, living in, in Switzerland, close to a lake, Lake of Constance, which is fine because you have this lake where you can swim, you have some mountains around and bikes as well. It's perfect. I think it's perfect. Uh, might be the climate could a little bit more southern, more warm, but you have to get used to it. It sounds like it's paradise there. Swim, yeah. bike, run. And what did you do just last year? Not too much, basically, because a couple of years before I suffered from a plantar ascite. I was not able to run anymore. Basically, I, I do some marathons and lots of half marathons and mountain marathons and things like that. And I was a little bit laid off, could not run anymore. The loud sports were aqua jogging, swimming, biking. In the end, I found, well, now that I have exercised at all, and after almost one year, I could go back to run again. And then, of course, the, the logical idea was to do a triathlon. Last year, the year before, we did, um, we were enrolled in the New York City Marathon. Mm -hmm. And as you probably know, <laughs> the borders have been open only one day after the mm -hmm. marathon took place. This was cancelled, so we had to find some replacement, which we found in Barcelona. And we probably try again this year. If the U.S. welcome us again, we would like to, to tick that off. For okay. We're well, ready for you. We're waiting for you. Yeah, November, okay. I think it's November 7 this year. That's Okay, we'll see you so, there. Barcelona sounds like a cool marathon too. Is it flat? It's very flat, yes. Yeah. And well, after the first time, we basically decide, Lisa and I, to do the where we go, not only by, by sportive criteria, but also where is it nice to go to. Yeah. We selected, selected cities like Paris, Rome, Venice, Barcelona. But uh, the older we get, the uh, slower we also <laughs> get, and therefore we prefer to have these uh, mountain marathons like Jungfrau, Zermatt, because then mm. you can't really compare the times achieved anymore. As they say, yeah. to go to the Boston Marathon, you need to qualify. And they always say either you get older or you get faster. In fact, uh, the Boston Marathon was on our bucket list as well. And then as I uh, Changed to a new age group. I oh, know what the other way, other way around. Lisa fulfilled this criteria for the age group, but not me. So I had to wait for one year and then I would have fulfilled the, the criteria as well. <laughs> Same is for, for New York. It's yeah. getting harder, but New York is certainly a wonderful marathon with so many people alongside. And obviously, it's very dear to my heart. I've done it 15 times. We are looking forward to it. Well, then last year we, I started with having some well, local fun triathlon, I would say, with 400 meters swimming and seven kilometers bike and 
four kilometer run. By mistake, I enrolled for the double long distance, what is that called? <laughs> but at least I, it got me a little bit the, the flavor of how this goes on. And then, I, well, I wish to have an official big triathlon as well and found then that it would be nice to combine that with a small trip to Italy again. When, so in the end, we, we ended up in Jesolo, Venezia to have this done. And this is a completely different experience than the local one before. Much more organized, much more rules. Oh. How so? Uh, like what, what differed from the local ones? The local one is you really have to check in. You take your bike with you and you have everything what you need in your bike. And if you do this uh, Ironman way of triathlon, you have to to check everything. You have these bags where you have to put the correct clothes in this uh, stop the transition zone where you have to get to the bike and where you have to step off the bike and things like that. That was much more mm -hmm. easier in this local yeah, yeah, yeah. before. Maybe it's the safety aspect. If you have, sometimes you have 2,000 participants And you have to be, you make sure that everybody is safe. So that's why they have the cutoff times. It's, it's about the liability. Maybe in the smaller ones, they don't have that as much. Definitely. No, that's a completely mm -hmm. different story. If you have uh, two, three hundred participants, this can handle <laughs> with a very light organization. Yeselo was about 5,000 participants. Oh, and so, yeah. of course, that's a completely different story. Tell us, how did it start? I'm always curious to find out we have this anticipation of like how would you go and then on the day itself, did it go according to plan? As I said, this is in Italy and Italy is the oh. champion, world champion in bureaucracy, <laughs> administration. That was terrible. First, as a foreigner, you have to present a medical certificate that certifies that not just a doctor, you really had to see an Italian sports clinic to check your health. Oh. And then he finally certifies that you are able, or in his view, you are able to participate and to mm -hmm. finish this, this event. We had to go to Italy to have this check done. Next thing is usually you have this day license. If you are not member of a, of a triathlon club, You have to buy a day license just to, to participate. Right. Not in Italy. There you have to have well, some, some membership. And now I'm member of a proud annual member of the USA Triathlon ah. organization. Because this is, in fact, ridiculous. But the Italians told me this is the easiest way to get the member without being this is a can. Do that online, pay 40 bucks, and then you are a member of the team, and then you are allowed to enroll to this. Uh, I, was, Iron I was a member too. So you have this is again for safety regulations and rules and whatever. And you're yeah. obviously they make money at the end mm, of the day. The letter is probably the most important. Every document uh, were prepared and hotel booked, the transition booked, and then they postponed the whole event <gasps> because as you probably don't know in the US but Italy had an exceptional election exactly that day and they were afraid of that probably <gasps> some voters would not have access to their office to, to, oh, to have their vote the whole thing was postponed <gasps> by two weeks oh what a surprise really and, and the funny thing was that was end of September it was planned And end of September, most of the hotels have, the season is over, hotels are closed. It's quite a challenge to get accommodation <laughs> oh. for, for five, well, not, not 5,000 people, but three or four certainly were not locals. Wow. Okay, but in the end, we could travel by, by car with all this equipment. For me, these days, three days before, during the night, that it was well... It was a horror show for me because during the night, I always visualized what will happen and particularly what could happen wrong and what could 
And I, I, in my dreams, I have I've packed the bag strongly. So, <laughs> I mean, you have the helmet, but you should have your running shoes. And well, and of course, the uh, tires had broken and no air pressure and things like that. So, three days or three nights. <laughs> three my, nights of uh, nightmare. <laughs> really, really. And well, did I check? Did I have the correct equipment? What can I put on my wetsuit? I tried three times to get it on and very fast. In the end, I had some some holes in it. That was, uh, was terrible, really. Oh, that's and, a good start. Uh, unfortunately, my wife, Lisa, she was with me and could calm or try to calm me down or at least would not bother me any more than checked out transition. We checked out the start and finish and, and everything. I was in the end, basically, I was well prepared. And the race day itself, that was fine. Once this thing started, I was quite calm and before the start for swimming. And so swimming went quite good. I was a little bit shocked because there were professionals that swim almost twice as fast as oh, I yeah. did. That's um, their profession. We're, yeah, we're not the professionals. Yeah. We have, to, I always say, the professionals. We go to an office. The professionals, they go and swim. They go and bike. That's the mm. difference. And the same on the bike. Right. I mean, I don't know how you yeah. can get so fast on the bike. For the bikes in particular, that were, it, I was very impressed. Uh, they had bikes that basically uh, did their work alone without... Yeah. Uh, well, at least that was my impression. Uh, <laughs> but in the end, uh, once you are in the uh, in the fight... It's fine. I was very focused. I had no real problems, at least in the beginning. So that, that was fine. And as I told, also there, it was flat. The bike, uh, unfortunately, with some wind. Oh. First some headwind, but then wind from behind, which is fine in the end. But it was, yeah. That's good. Okay. And the run? That's your and strong run, discipline. I always said, well, running is a part I, I like most and I know most. Once I have finished the bike split, it's basically done. I have to admit it was not like that. Mm -hmm. The first 10 kilometers were fine, but then I had for the next such challenge, I should concentrate more on nutrition. I was not really able to eat during the bike split mm -hmm. and uh, my impression was that after 10 kilometers of the run, the batteries were empty. Oh, so I only wanted to go to the finish. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, it was in a, uh, there were three rounds. Th no, four. Four times the same round, which is mentally quite demanding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, I've seen this was very hot, but in the end, and but also... More support from Lisa, for example, and mm -hmm. she called together the whole hotel staff because the hotel was directly at, at the running lane. So that was at least you have then four times oh, bigger super post, support. Big support. Wow. Yeah, at least that, that um, was fine. They always say, and I didn't know that when I started to train for my Ironman, nutrition is the fourth discipline. And yeah. I remember once I did a half Ironman and my coach at that time says, eat before the hill and thank wow. god he told me like because there was such a huge uphill where you have to hold on to your life in a way so you cannot eat he said eat mm -hmm. before you get all those wow. tips and tricks yeah. and in when i did the ironman i set an alarm on my watch every 20 minutes i was drinking every 40 minutes i was eating so it was all timed uh, okay all tricks. When is yeah. the next one? Between the next one, I yeah. don't know. I don't know. Okay. I did not check. We had some. We have some ideas, but not yet. So, but well, then, um, are you still kind of like calling yourself a runner, marathon runner, or you go the route of the triathlon now? I think I still feel being a, a marathon runner, but in the meantime, I found the training is is more. Interesting. If you have, if you only run, well, you run. That's quite boring. Now swimming, even that I I don't particularly like swimming. So, but I have a very good 
friend Briska, she always, or both of us, are not the real swimming enthusiasts, but we both motivate each other. If one doesn't like to go, then the other calls, and you, you cannot say no anymore. Huh? But in the end, I have to say it's it's quite it's much more fun to being able to to swim, to run, and to bike. Be it bike, mountain bike, and and more. It's it's more change. It's not that boring as running alone. What advice do you have for somebody who wants to enter into triathlon? I think the most important is have a training program. I had one. I don't say it's absolutely necessary to follow very strictly what, what is done, but I have the feeling that if I wouldn't have had this program, I probably would have done always the same exercises. And the training program urges you to change, to have this, the long legs, the short legs, the intervals, the slow and the fast units. As I mentioned before, like a Briska colleague, don't do it yourself or alone. I think that's quite hard. And these are very good advice. So we know that... Yes, the marathon or even the triathlon, you do it by yourself, but training together is so important. I have to get used to that. I used to run always myself. And then, of course, it's also, it's critical to have someone at in about the same level. Well, that's the hard part. And, yeah. and I think it doesn't help if you go with someone who is much slower or much faster. And I think I, in the end, I guess these three night Mares before, <laughs> I hope next time I have been over with this. I know now how this works and I'm sure I will be nervous as, as well, but not that nervous anymore. And of course, well, I said, okay, let's do that once. But once you finish that, you always have the idea, how could I be faster? It's that bug um, that we all have when they do a race, a marathon, a triathlon. Let's try again. Exactly. So all the best for a happy and healthy injury-free season. And we'll see you thank in you. New York and the New York yeah. City Marathon. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's, let's hope so. Yeah. Thanks to you. Always nice to talk to a fellow Ironman. What are you taking away from this episode? Do it. Don't get any nightmares. Take it from the Iron Woman. We have episodes every Monday. Don't miss out. There's something for everybody. And Take It From The Iron Woman is the book, Global Business Coaching with Sports Parallels. Thank you so much.